Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Metzler, one of the programmers here at SF Doc Fest. Um, as you know, uh, we love kind of uh, hidden history and eclectic and odd. And so uh, it's really great that we were able to bring this film, The Assassination and Mrs. Payne here. And we're lucky enough to have the co-director here. Hi, Max. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be playing my film here. Uh, I'm a local filmmaker. I live in Berkeley and uh, love the Roxy. Yeah, very uh, cool. Yeah, we're glad the Roxy's uh, back up and open and uh, we're able to kind of have screenings both in person and here uh, virtually. I mean, I, you know, I imagine a lot of people in their audience are just like, you know, this is a really like WTF uh, sort of story, you know, it's like, how did you kind of first uh, hear about Mrs. Payne and, you know, know that there was a film here you wanted to make? Well, I had a friend about 15 years ago who was kind of a, an assassination buff and he would tell me about stuff and I never really knew that much about it. It sounded very complicated, but he, he recommended a book to me at some point and I read that book. It's called uh, JFK and the Unspeakable. And in that book, they talk about Ruth Payne and her husband, Michael Payne. Uh, and they bring up all these intriguing questions of how, how they possibly could, be, could have been involved with uh, some sort of conspiracy or cover up or, you know, framing Oswald. And, uh, and then I found out that Ruth Payne actually lived in Santa Rosa uh, in a retirement home. And I thought, wow, I mean, this, this is amazing. Uh, could, it, could it be true? Who knows? Is, would she be open to talking to me? Uh, so I just reached out to her. Uh, that was seven plus years ago. Yeah. Very cool. I, I think one of the things that's really cool with documentaries sometimes is this idea of like, sometimes you just have to seize the moment because if not, you know, um, there are these stories that don't get kind of recorded and held and really like the way that you approached it. And so, um, you know, when you first approached her, I mean, was she skeptical at all or had she reached kind of a point in time in her life that, you know, like, you know, what was that kind of process of like in documentary, we often talk about trust building, you know, about like, how do you kind of, you know, you know, what, what's, what's the process of we're having subjects kind of trust you and kind of share, uh, share things with you? Well, uh, we exchanged some emails and she, she sort of checked that I at least knew the basics about the assassination story. And, you know, I w wasn't totally ignorant. Uh, and um, I was surprised actually, she's, she's very open with people. She's done a lot of interviews over the years, which I, I didn't know beforehand. Uh, and she, authors have, have gone up and met with her and asked her questions and people both pro and anti-conspiracy have, have talked to her and she's, she's pretty much open to talk to anyone and to share her story. And what was it that, you know, um, once you met her, was there any things that kind of, um, you know, what were the kind of biggest surprises in the making of this film for you based on your, your, your first assumptions? Well, I, I just, I discovered how, how subtle things can get, how there, there are all these other perspectives that you don't realize when you first look, look at a story or, or hear, you know, one version of it. Uh, things are, things are much more complex than you imagine. And um, there are a lot of ways where, you know, this, this is a polarized issue. There's people very strongly who think there was no conspiracy and that's, that's crazy to even consider that. And then there's just people who are sure there was a conspiracy. Um, and, you know, I, I, I tried to, to balance both perspectives in my mind as I was doing this. And I, you know, sometimes would see both sides mirror each other in some ways. And, uh, you know, you can see there, there are ways people refuse to, to look at things that might contradict their, their viewpoint. Um, right. And that goes, goes for both sides. Uh, yeah. And, you know, um, what was the process of, kind of, you know, um, when you were making the film, you know, there's kind of a very kind of intimate quality to it. Like, how did you decide that you wanted to tell the story? I mean, in the sense that, like, 
were you editing at the same time or were you just kind of filming as much as possible and you kind of figured out the story in the editing room um, as you went along? So this originally started out as my thesis film when I was getting an MFA in documentary um, in 2015. So I made a 20 minute short film about Ruth Payne. And I knew while I was editing that film that it deserved to be a feature because I just I couldn't pack everything into 20 minutes. Uh, so I, I had that as as a basis. And then I just kept on shooting more interviews uh, finding more archival, um, and, you know, at a certain point I, I put myself in the film. Uh, it was, I wasn't in the 20 minute film. I, I, I didn't do narration or, you know, talk about my own role. And, uh, I just figured it was, it was the most practical way to tell the story, uh, especially being a low budget you know, production, I, I could write the narration and I could sort of use myself as, as a tool to tell the story. Um, but I, I wanted to keep myself pretty, pretty subtle in there. You know, I'm, it's not, the focus isn't me. I'm just a, a guide to this historical, you know, tale. And what do you think, um, you know, as time kind of, um, as we get further and further from the assassination of JFK, you know? Do you think that this is something that's just gonna kind of stay with our culture, you know, decades into the future? Or as, you know, from people from that time period pass away, do you think that this, you know, will be more kind of a footnote? Like, what, do you think it's, you know, is this kind of a conspiracy for the ages? Or do you think it's something that just like, um, you know, folks from a certain time are kind of, you know, focused upon? Yeah. I think in some ways it is a conspiracy for the ages, but uh, yeah, the, the people who remember the event have, have a much you know, closer tie to it. And I, I realized younger people, you know, people who I was going to school with who were in their twenties, uh, they didn't know anything about this. And I was, I was surprised, I'm, I'm a little bit older, but you know, uh, and I, I felt like, you know, this is amazing history and it's, it's important. And, you know, uh, everybody should, should do a little bit of investigation for themselves, you know, to know the basics, because uh, this, is, this is a major cleaving point <laughs> in our country. You know, there, there are a lot of people who see this as sort of the watershed moment, uh, either for like a loss of innocence or for, you know, the uh, beginning of the national security state. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, my, my specific goal actually was, was to reach younger people and keep this history alive because usually it's, it's kind of only history nerds or assassination buffs, conspiracy buffs, who are into this kind of thing. And I think everybody should, should know something about this story. It's, it's an amazing story. Well, very cool. Well, thanks again for making this film. And, um, you know, it's a very much an SF Doc Fest sort of film. So we're excited to have it as part of the lineup. And, you know, um, I know folks are, um, after they see this, uh, they're probably going to want to tell folks about it. Like, so what's, what are ways that folks can kind of um, continue to follow the film and your efforts and also kind of um, tell people about this really cool film they saw? So our website is jfkpain.com, J-F-K-P-A-I-N-E. Uh, we're also on Facebook uh, and Twitter. Um, and those would be the best, best places to, to stay up to date with the film. Very cool. Well, thanks again, uh, Max. And uh, really appreciate you sharing the film with us. Thanks a lot.